How are you feeling right now? Well, it's been a whirlwind. Revivals are commonplace these days, but given how poorly Dexter's eight-season run ended, it's hard to see 10-episode limited series Dexter New Blood as anything but an attempt at a do-over. Regardless, it's not exactly the worst idea in the world, and considering New Blood's fun opener, Cold Snap, there's still some good ghoulish story to mine from the world of Dexter Morgan. Whoa! <laughs> Easy there. <laughs> what is the problem? I kind of have a thing about blood. Original Dexter showrunner Clyde Phillips, who oversaw the series' first four seasons, returns to the fold to transport us back to what we loved about the show in the first place, albeit with some new tinkering to the format, as this Dexter Morgan is a changed man. He's removed himself from everything and everyone, allowing himself a normie life in the frozen remote town of Iron Lake, New York. It's here that we land back into Dexter's story, and much of it's familiar, in a good way. Going by Jim Lindsay, Dexter's got everyone fooled again, though not in a sociopathic plot that allows him to secretly murder, he's simply taken to wearing his person mask for real now. This is my life. With this era of Jim Lindsay also comes a slightly changed series. It ditches the famed opening credits, the Dexter narration, and a few other hallmarks of the original run. That's not to say these things can't return, but New Blood is out to deliver a mix of old and fresh, and it lands really well here at the start. Still intact, however, is the comic panel vibe of the old show. When Jim is out and about, the bouncy cartoonish mood returns, once again acting as the lens through which Dexter sees people around him. Jim is a superficial persona because it's mostly what he sees in others, and his mirror neurons are working overtime once again. It's one of the elements that made the first series so unique and groundbreaking. There are a few surprises we won't go into here for this first episode, but one thing that's kind of inescapable is Jennifer Carpenter's return as Deb, who now looms in Dexter's psyche in a similar manner to James Remar's ghost of Harry in the original. Her presence is very much a sad and heavy phantom in Cold Snap. She doesn't act like the old Deb, as Dexter's projection is not her bold vulgarity-firing self. At times, it feels more like a Victorian-era haunting. It's just another slight twist of the old formula that helps give new blood a crisp sheen. Naturally, for New Blood to work, there has to be some disruption to this status quo. Cold Snap gives us a lot to chew on, but the most pressing pain is the arrival of Steve M. Robertson as spoiled stockbroker Matt Caldwell, a son of privilege who yearns to party and shoot up the woods as an irresponsible hunter. It's textbook Dexter collision stuff, sure, but that's part of the comfort food we crave from this new series. It still works because of how easily Michael C. Hall is able to slip into these shoes and take us back to the simple days of dark passengers and anti-hero avenging. You are a serial killer. You love that you're getting away with murder and you cannot wait to kill again. Dexter returns reborn with a few tweaks and fidgets to the formula, but not so as to mask the malicious fun of the hallmarks from the old show. Michael C. Hall steps effortlessly back into his old sociopath role as time away and a change of scenery has done wonders to revitalize this pop culture icon. Cold Snap is a great and grisly opener for New Blood, setting the stage and delivering a Dexter Morgan doing his damnedest to remain chaste on the murder front. Whether or not, contextually, this is all just a shot at a do-over feels irrelevant because New Blood's mix of old and new holds a ton of promise. For more on the latest bloody shows, check out our reviews of Chucky and Amazon's I Know What You Did Last Summer, and for everything else, stick with IGN.